today we're going to talk about conversation three. We are in Fast Track 3. We're on Chapter 2. At this point, we have done both the self-practices, and now we are on a classroom activity. Okay. This is going, for you, it's going to be a writing, or you can speak it, or you can record it, whatever you want to do. But what I want you to do is I want you to keep talking on each one of these for as long as you can. I'll go through them and then I'll give you an example, okay? Listen and repeat. As soon as this class ends, I'll have lunch. Really, where will you go for lunch? As soon as this class ends, I'll. Once I get home, I'll. I'll definitely before I go to bed. I won't stay up late unless, if it rains tomorrow, I'll. Even if I have time on the weekends, I won't. When I find a job, I'll, I'll probably after I graduate. Okay, how this works is try to say at least six sentences. Read the first two and try to add at least four more sentences. This is a speaking practice to help you think about what you are going to do. As soon as this class ends, I'll have lunch. Really? Where will you go for lunch? I'll go for lunch in the school cafeteria. Really? What are you going to have? I don't know. They have this new chicken salad sandwich that sounds pretty good. What will you have to drink? I'll probably order a coffee, but I've been thinking about having a strawberry egg. That sounds really good. Can I go with you? Yeah, sure. Okay, now that was a complete conversation, which is at least six lines. You can write this out. You can talk it out, whatever you want to do. The idea is that you keep going. I'm not worried about you making a grammatical mistake. This isn't about perfection. It's about keeping talking. A in English, you have to keep talking. Okay, I'll give you another example. As soon as the class ends, I'll. Well, as soon as the class ends, I'll go get a snack. Really? Where are you going to go? Well, there's a 7-Eleven over there. I think I'm going to go there and see what they have. That's junk food. You should go to a coffee shop. They have some better food. I agree. Maybe I'll go ahead and have a bagel or something. That sounds great. Which coffee shop would you like to go to? Well, there's one on the first floor, and they have these cheese bagels that are amazing, and their cappuccino is perfect. What are you going to eat? Well, that sounds really good. Actually, I was thinking about going to get uh, a candy bar at the convenience store. Wait a minute. You talked me out of a candy bar. Why do you get one and I don't? Okay, so that would be a sentence, a, a complete dialogue you're doing with that. Okay, let's try another one. Once I get home, I'll. Once I get home, I'll do my homework. What are you going to do after that? Well, then I'm going to be very hungry and I'm going to have to eat some dinner. What will you do after dinner? I have to walk the dog. I have a beautiful little chihuahua. Oh, that sounds great. Let me walk uh, or let me walk the dog with you. I can come over. No, I'd rather be alone tonight. I understand. What are you going to do after you walk the dog? Well, I was planning on doing some reading and then watching some television. I try to read ahead in class, so I'm sure I understand what's going on when I get there. I understand. Then after television, I usually listen to some music very quietly before I go to sleep. That sounds like a great nighttime routine. Okay, so there's a very good six sentences. Okay, I'll definitely something before I go to bed. Right, well, let's practice that one. I'll definitely brush my teeth before I go to bed. 
Well, everyone brushes their teeth before they go to bed. What else do you do before you go to bed? Well, I take my showers in the morning after I work out. So usually I read a book for at least 20 or 30 minutes until my eyes get heavy and I start wanting to sleep. Really, uh, before I go to bed, I usually listen to some music. Sometimes I have a dance party so I can make myself exhausted so that I sleep. You have a problem sleeping? I find that bizarre. Uh, before I go to bed, I listen to some quiet music or I meditate for a little bit. I'm able to fall asleep really easily. Hmm, maybe I'll try that. Okay. And now, unless is kind of a problem, so we'll go over that. I won't stay up late unless... I won't stay up late unless I get a phone call from my mom. Oh, I understand. You have to talk to your mom before you do anything else. Absolutely. If I don't pick up the phone, she gets worried that I've been in an accident or something terrible. Sounds like your mother worries too much. I agree. After I talk with my mother, I'll, I'll definitely go to sleep. I've had a very long day today. Well, let's hope your mother doesn't call. Okay. Now, won't means you're not going to do something. Number six is, even if I have time on the weekend, I won't. Even if I have time on the weekend, I won't do any extra homework. I wrote three papers this week and spent half my time in the library. Really? I like to work ahead. Uh, even, uh, so even if I have time on the weekend, uh, you know, I won't watch a, a movie at the movie theater. Why not? I don't really have any money, and the drinks and the snacks make me fat. I think I'd rather watch Netflix at home. Oh, can I come over and watch Netflix with you? I love science fiction and you hate it. What are we going to watch? I don't know. Let's find something. So that's how you do that. You go back and forth with the sentences. You try to talk for as long as you can. Try to talk for at least six sentences. Put me on pause. Go through and do every single one of these. Talk it through. Try to answer and try to keep talking and make up a dialogue that goes for at least six sentences. You can write it down if you want to. If you don't want to, just talk. Once again, I'm not worried about mistakes. Put me on pause and just keep talking. Okay, now I'm going to make you talk again after all the talking you just did. Now we're going to talk about fortunately and unfortunately. Fortunately means it's really good that something happened. Unfortunately means it's really bad that something happened. Okay. Fortunately, Victor left his house early on Monday. Unfortunately, it started to rain when he stepped outside. See, fortunately, he packed an umbrella before he left home. Unfortunately, his umbrella was broken. Fortunately, he was able to stop at a convenience store and get another umbrella. Listen and repeat. Fortunately, Victor left his house early on Monday. Unfortunately, it started to rain when he stepped outside. Fortunately, he packed an umbrella before he left home. Unfortunately, his umbrella was broken. Fortunately, there was a convenience store nearby, so he got a new umbrella. Unfortunately, he forgot his umbrella on the bus. Okay, these are stories you're telling about fortunate and unfortunate events. What you need to do is you need to keep talking and and talk about fortunately and unfortunately as much as you can. Try to go for at least five sentences. So Stephanie found her lost cell phone. Listen and repeat. Stephanie found her lost cell phone. Chris and Kendra went camping. Steve didn't break his leg. Chan received an acceptance letter from Harvard. That means he received a letter saying that he can go to college at Harvard. Wow. It's a very, very expensive, high-level school in the United States. Okay. So Stephanie found her lost cell phone. Fortunately, the police had found it, and they picked it up. 
Unfortunately, she had to walk all the way to the police station to get it. Unfortunately, sorry, fortunately, she got her cell phone back. Unfortunately, there the credit card she had was lost. Fortunately, she was close to the bank so she could walk over there. Unfortunately, she had to fill out a lot of paperwork to get a new credit card. Fortunately, no one had made any charges on the credit card. Unfortunately, uh, she had to wait two days for it to be mailed to her. Okay, so you're just going to keep talking as long as you can, just like with the last one. Okay, let's do another one. Chris and Kendra went camping. Fortunately, they remembered to pack all of the food they would need. Unfortunately, it started to rain as soon as they got to the campsite. Fortunately, they found a dry space under a tree to throw up their tent. Unfortunately, Kendra had forgotten to bring all of the uh, fence ties. Fortunately, Chris was able to tie the parts of their tent to the trees, and there were, therefore the tent was held up. Unfortunately, it took them a long time to put the tent up, and they were very cold and shaky by the time they got in the tent. Fortunately, they had towels and were able to dry off. Unfortunately, Kendra forgot the flashlight. So you're going to keep talking about what would happen. So keep talking for at least six sentences for each of these. Uh, just keep talking and talking and talking. Put me on pause and practice these. Okay. Now optional activity means you don't have to, to do it for your test, but this is very good practice. Right now we're going to listen to Paul. Paul is going to talk about his day. You are going to write down true or false for each sentence. Read the sentences now to be sure you understand what it is you are listening for. Whenever you're listening, read the questions first. This is Paul's unusual day. He had a weird day. Unusual means strange or weird. Today was strange. I left home at 7 o'clock, as I always do. I walked to the bus stop, but when I got there, I was all alone. Where was Tony? Where was Janet? We usually catch the bus together in the morning. I kept checking my watch while the time passed. They didn't come. The bus was late, too. It normally arrives at 7.15, but today I waited until 7.30. When I got on the bus, it was entirely empty. I took a seat near the back. As I looked out the window, the city seemed strangely quiet. It felt like I was in a dream. I rang the bell on 42nd Street and walked to the front door of my office building. So my, to my surprise, the front doors were, were locked. I waved to the security guard and he came to greet me. Mr. Smith... Why are you here on a Sunday? He asked. When I heard the kiss question, I immediately understood my mistake. Turned around and went straight back home. I hope I never have another weekend like this one. Paul's unusual day. Listen and write true or false for uh, beside each sentence. Today was strange. I left home at 7 o'clock as I always do. I walked to the bus stop and when I got there, I was all alone. Where was Tony? Where was Janet? We usually catch the bus together in the morning. I kept checking my watch while the time passed. They didn't come. The bus was late. Two, it normally arrives at 7.15, but today I waited until 7.30. When I got on the bus, it was entirely empty. I took a seat near the back. As I looked out the window, the city seemed strange and quiet. I felt like I was in a dream. I rang the bell on 42nd Street and walked to the front door of my office building. To my surprise, the front doors were locked. I waved at the security guard and he came to greet me. Mr. Smith, why are you here on a Sunday? He asked. When I heard that question, I immediately understood my mistake. I turned around and went straight back home. I hope I never have a weekend like this one. Peter always uh, leaves home at 7 o'clock. That's true. He talked with Janet while he waited for the bus. False. He didn't notice the time when he, because he forgot his watch. False. The bus was empty when Paul got on it. True. He sat at the front of the bus and talked with the driver. False. The city was unusually busy in the morning. False. When Paul arrived at work, the doors were locked. 
True. He talked with the security guard before returning home. True. Listen to the words and stressed in the sentences. Practice reading them with a partner. Listen and repeat. This shirt is too small. He really wants to win. You should listen before you speak. Although you're tired, you can't quit. The movie was very funny. They definitely cannot arrive late. She applied after the deadline. Whenever I'm away, I think of you. One more time. Repeat after me. The shirt is too small. He really wants to win. You should listen before you speak. Although you're tired, you can't quit. The movie was very funny. They definitely cannot arrive late. She applied after the deadline. Whenever I'm away, I think of you. Reading and writing. Read the story and fill in the blanks with the correct adverbial clauses. Then match the paragraph letter with the pictures. First, look at the pictures and be sure you understand what's in them. Then listen very closely and write the correct words in the blank. Okay. So when author, when Ar when Arthur was, uh, Davis was looking at his cell phone one day, he got a big surprise. His social media account showed a friend request and the friend looked exactly like Arthur. He accepted the request even though it seemed a prank. It seemed like a prank. Soon after, he received a message. It said, this seems really strange, but I think we might be twins. Arthur was an actor, and he recently filmed the commercial for a laundry detergent. Greg saw the commercial on TV. While he was watching it, he couldn't believe his eyes. He filmed Arthur on social media the next day. As the strangers chatted by sending messages, they learned a lot about each other. They had the same birthday. They were born in the same city. They were both adoptees. That means they were adopted by someone. Okay. Arthur lived in California, and Greg lived in Arizona. Since they lived so far apart, they wanted advice before meeting. They went to separate clinics to get a DNA test. Once the results came, the two men were astounded. That means very surprised. They were definitely brothers. They started making plans to meet as soon as they were free. In November, Greg came to California. The brothers met for the first time on a local TV show. Now the brothers are looking for their mother. If they find her, they will share their happiness about finding each other about after many years apart. Okay. Let's listen. One more time. When Arthur Davis was looking at his phone one day, he got a big surprise. His social media account showed a friend request and the friend looked exactly like Arthur. He accepted the request, even though it seemed like a prank. A prank is when you're playing a joke on someone. Soon after, he received a message. It said, this seems really strange, but I think we might be twins. Arthur was an actor, and he uh, uh, recently filmed a commercial for a laundry detergent. Greg saw the commercial on TV. While he was watching it, he couldn't believe his eyes. He found Arthur on social media the next day. As the strangers chatted by sending messages, they learned a lot about each other. They had the same birthday. They were born in the same city. They were both adoptees. Arthur lived in California and Greg lived in Arizona. Since they lived so far apart, they wanted advice before meeting. They went to separate clinics to get a DNA test. Once the results came, the two men were astounded. They were definitely brothers. They started making plans to meet as soon as they were free. In November, Greg came to California. The brothers met for the first time on a local TV show. Now the brothers are looking for their mother. If they find her, they will share their happiness about finding each other after many years apart. Grammar review, adverbs and adverbial phrases. It's very important to study your grammar review because it's a way for you to understand how to uh, do your writing test. Example, she almost always works late. The golf ball stopped very close to the hole. They quietly whispered together. To whisper means to, use a, uh, to speak very, very quietly. The hotel concierge greeted us kindly. Concierge, concierge is someone who 
is at a hotel who is responsible for making sure the guests get the things they need like theater tickets or directions. The train is leaving right now. I can't see clearly because my glasses are dirty. The t-shirt is too small. Can I try a bigger size? Fortunately, no one was injured in the accident. Hurry up. You're walking too slowly. Here are your answers. Okay. This combines the sentences using the adverbs in the parentheses. And what you're going to do is there's two ways to make this sentence. You make a comma and put it at the end, or you can put it at the beginning. Okay. Once the judges announce the results, the officials award medals to the top three athletes. Or you can say the officials award the medals to the top three athletes once the judges announce the results. So you can uh, do it both ways. The winning athletes feel proud because they represented their country well. The, uh, the, uh, they represented their country well, comma, so the winning athletes feel proud. The national anthem plays while the gold medal winner stands on top of the podium. The gold medal winner stands on top of the podium while the national anthem plays. You can switch this because while it says that two things are happening at the same time. The ceremonies are almost always the same wherever athletes compete in the Olympics. Wherever can also go at the beginning of the sentence. You can say, wherever, the wherever athletes compete in the Olympics, comma, the ceremonies are almost always the same. Let's see. Circle the correct adverb and check the sentences that are true about you. Now, we'll probably go home after 8 p.m. tonight. I will have dinner with my parents when I get home. Unless I have homework, I will relax on the sofa. I will have a shower as soon after. I will have a shower after I check my phone messages. You can't check them at the same time, so as is not the correct word. That would be a very strange thing to do in the shower. If I feel tired, I will go to bed early. Until I wake up tomorrow, my mom will cook breakfast. Oh, though I, as I commute to school, I will think about my classes. So thinking about classes at the same time. So as is at the same time. As I commute to school, I will think about my classes. Commute is traveling somewhere like on a bus or a train or, or, or on a bike or something. Tomorrow will be a great day for me, even if the weather is bad. Tomorrow will be a great day for me, even if the weather is bad. Okay, that completes this chapter. What you need to do is study your grammar review. Be sure you understand how to make all of these sentences. It's very important to do that. Okay, you don't reading and writing listening and pronunciation are not on the test. These are not on the test. However, you're fortunately and unfortunately, you're going to have to need to know for the test. You're going to need to know what you're going to do if you have time, because this is practice. This is practice for using the things in your grammar. Your grammar is here. Practice using these in sentences. This is how they're going to be on your writing test. There may be a wrong word order with these sentences. Uh, there may be fill in the blank where you have to fill in the correct word. You're going to have to understand how to use each one of these correctly in a sentence. Practice doing that. Once again, Naver often has practiced sentences when you look up a word in Papago, so you can learn how to write them correctly. You can learn how to use them correctly in a sentence. Once again, any word you do not understand, look it up on Papago. You must be able to understand the vocabulary in order to learn the tests. Remember, for this speaking test, you're, all, you're often using the uh, references A and B, and they're having a conversation understand how to use 
the correct words in that sentence. I'm very glad for teaching this particular class today. Have a wonderful day and see you later.